selling covered calls is a great way to generate cash flow every month in your account. But what if after selling a covered call, a stock goes way up in price, it goes way past the covered call strike price that you sold, and you don't want the stock called away from you? What can you do to fix that covered call position and avoid the stock from being called away from you? That's what this video is about. In this video, I'm going to share with you four techniques I use to fix cover call options that have gone in the money and sometimes deep in the money. These are techniques that you can use to hold on to your stock while still collecting that nice cash flow that covered calls can pay you. The first decision you have to make if a covered call goes in the money is, are you okay with the stock being called away from you or not? If you're okay with the stock being called away from you, then you can simply do nothing. Just let the covered call option be assigned. And that's not what this video is about. This video is about what you do if you don't want that covered call option assigned. Here are the four techniques I use to fix cover call options that have gone in the money. And as this video progresses, you're going to see these tips get more and more advanced and they can be used for more difficult situations or situations where those cover calls have gone deep in the money. Now, the first is pretty simple and straightforward. You simply roll the cover call option up as you roll it out. And here you see an example of that in our PSA cover call position. We bought to close the December 260 cover call and simultaneously sold the March $270 cover call. So we roll that cover call strike price up by $10, pocketed $2.80 per share, but in order to make that happen for that credit of $2.80 per share, we had to go out to March. So we had to go out three months in order to get this rolled up by $10 and still pocket a credit. Ideally, I like to roll these out by just one month, but if I need to go out several months in order to make it happen for a credit, I will consider doing that as you see here with PSA. And this works nicely if the cover call option hasn't gone too far in the money. Now let's step up our level of difficulty or make it more challenging. Let's deal with an option that's gone deep in the money. How can we deal with that? Before I show you exactly how you can do that, let me show you the stock we're going to talk about first. Here you see the weekly chart of DLR. It's a real estate investment trust. And one reason why I picked this example is because we've rolled this stock way up in price. We dealt with a covered call position that's been in the money for quite a long time. When I zoom out here, you see all the trades we've done in which we rolled our cover call strike price up as we rolled it out. And this goes back over a year. In fact, it's right at 13 months when we started rolling this cover call strike price up as we rolled it out. You see the challenge is that since we entered this cover call position, DLR has gone up over 44%. But notice what we've been able to accomplish. Going back about 13 months ago, we started with a $90 cover call option as you see down here. About a month later, we rolled it up to the $95 strike price. Then going out about seven more months, we rolled up to the $100 strike price. Then going out about another month and a half, we rolled it up to the $105 strike price. And finally, two months later, we rolled up to the $110 strike price cover call, which is the cover call we're at right now. But how are we able to do that? Here you see the spreadsheet where I record all my option trades. In this case, we're looking at the DLR spreadsheet. You see the $90 strike price cover call we started with and how we rolled up to 95. But notice what we use to help fund rolling that cover call strike price up. We saved some room in our position sizing, and because of that, we're able to sell a cash secure put option to help fund rolling that cover call strike price up. Then we did it again on June 7th. We rolled that cover call strike price up by $5 and again helped fund it by selling a cash secure put option. A month and a half later, we did it again. Rolled the cover call strike price up by $5 and helped fund it by selling an additional cash secure put option. And finally, several months ago, we rolled that cover call strike price up again by $5 and funded it by selling a cash secure put option. As a result of being able to roll those cover calls up, as you see in the bottom right, our out-of-pocket cost for these DLR shares is just over $70 per share. And right now, we are short the 110 cover call option that expires this month. So we have a nice profit of almost $40 per share. And this is in a cover call position we've been fighting for over a year now. Selling additional cash secure put options in stocks you own cover calls in, that the cover calls have gone deep in the money, is a nice way to generate extra cash flow that you can use to help roll those cover call strike prices up. But in order to do this, you need to have position sizing available. And that's why we like to keep additional position sizing available in all of our option positions. Here's a third technique you might consider using to help fund rolling a cover call strike price up. As I shared with you earlier, we're in a cover call position in PSA. But to help fund not only lowering our out-of-pocket costs on this cover call position in PSA, but also to help fund rolling the cover call strike price up as we rolled it out, on occasion, we've been selling additional bearish call credit spreads against PSA. Here you see that several months ago, we sold the 270 call option and we bought for protection the 310 call option. But as a result of doing this additional bearish call credit spread, we're able to pocket an additional $4.15 per share on top of what we received for doing the cover call position in PSA. As you see here, several weeks later, we closed this short call option portion of this bearish call credit spread out for $0.35 cents per share. 
So Pocket has some really nice cash flow in this position. But then PSA did us a favor. Five days later, it went up in price, so we were able to resell that same $280 call option and pocket an additional $1.15 per share. Fast forward just eight days, we were able to close that short call option out for $0.20 cents per share. Now, a word of caution here. If the stock is very bullish, you want to be careful about doing this. I'd prefer to sell additional cash care put options instead of doing a bearish call credit spread. If this stock seems to be kind of stuck in a certain area, you might consider selling additional bearish call credit spreads to help collect some cash to help you fund rolling your cover call option up as you roll it out in the future. So this third technique is to consider selling additional bearish call credit spreads against a cover call position you own, especially in stocks that don't seem to be going up in price really fast. Now I've saved what I consider the most creative technique that you can use to help fix your cover call positions for last. And I actually did this with a naked call option position in the S&P 500. Before I talk you through this technique, let me first show you my position in SPX right now. We've sold the SPX February 29th, $4,900 naked call options. Now this is not a position I'm encouraging you to do. Before you sell a naked call option in anything, you really want to understand your risk. I'm simply sharing this position with you so you understand why I did the trade that I did. So we have this naked $4,900 call option we've sold and expires about two months from now. And this is actually a position that went against us last month. The S&P 500 going up so much over the past few months, the naked call option that we've been selling was in the money. So in order to fix it, I rolled it up as I rolled it out. So I want to do something that would help me out if the S&P 500 continued to go up and our $4,900 call option expires in two months was challenged. Here's the trade I did. I did what's called a broken wing butterfly in SPX. I bought one of the SPX February 29th, that same expiration day as the naked call option I've sold. So I bought one of the February 29th $5,005 call options. I then sold to open two of the $5,040 call options with the same expiration day. And to cap my potential loss, which I'll talk about in just a minute, I bought the $5,100 call option. I bought one of those. We entered this position for a credit of $95 minus commission. So we got paid up front to enter this position. So how would this work? Well, here you see the notes I gave to my patrons when I sent out this trade alert. I let them know that this broken wing butterfly in XPX it would complement our naked call option positions in the same underlying SPX. If SPX continues to go up, this position also has the potential to go up in value. Now it's not guaranteed because there is a risk we're taking on here, and I'll show you that risk in just a second. You see the perfect spot for SPX with this position is for it to be right at 5,040 at expiration. If that were to happen, that $5,005 call option that we bought will be worth $35 per share or $3,500 for the contract. So if SPX continues to go up, the $4,900 call option that we sold, they might be challenged, they might be losing some value, but we might be gaining value with this broken wing butterfly in SPX. So it could potentially make $35 per share with this position. But what could go wrong? And that's an important question because before you place any trade, you want to know what's the worst case scenario. Our worst case scenario would happen if SPX was a above $5,100 at expiration and we didn't do anything with it. Now, I'm not gonna let that happen. If I see SPX going way up in value, I will adjust this position. But let's just say we didn't do anything with it. What's the worst that can happen? Here you see in the notes I share my patron. I told them that if SPX was above $5,075 at expiration and we didn't do anything with it, we'd begin to lose money. And our max loss, if SPX was above $5,100 at expiration, we didn't do anything with it, our max loss will be $2,500. Now, of course, there's a lot of things we can do to help save this position, but I'd like everyone to know what's the worst that can happen so you can plan for it. How can you use this to fix a cover call position that's gone deep in the money? If the cover call still looks bullish, why well, consider doing something like a broken wing butterfly or maybe just a butterfly? That way, if the stock continues to go up in price, you can benefit from that stock price appreciation. That would help fund rolling new cover call options up as you rolled them out. Using techniques like butterflies and ratio spreads can be powerful ways to help adjust and fix positions that you want to stay in, but you want to collect that cash flow by selling cover call options on a regular basis. If you'd like to get a little help finding potentially undervalued companies to buy outright or to trade stocks in, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see how you can avoid letting a covered call position or any option position be assigned, check out the video at the link above in the description below entitled The Truth About Option Assignments. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.